All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is install Pi Airbyte locally onto our machine. And there's one prerequisite that you need to make sure of. So I'm gonna go here in my terminal and I'm gonna check my Python version. So I'm gonna say Python hyphen hyphen version. You want at least 3.10, 3.9, anything above that should be fine. Just to be safe, I would err on the side of 3.10. And as long as you have that, you should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a directory here called Pi Airbyte. That file already exists. Let me just say Pi Airbyte underscore demo. And and cd into that. So the one thing and one command that we're gonna have to run is going to be simply pip install airbyte. And I'm going to go ahead and let that run. Obviously I have that installed already, so it's not gonna take that long, but once you have that installed, we can go ahead and create our virtual environment now to start running and going on with this demo. Uh, and in case you guys didn't know how to do a virtual environment, so it's simply just Python, three hyphen M V env, and then we're going to name our environment env there. So we're going to create that and make sure you're in the root directory of your project. So that way you're creating the environment in the same directory your project's going to be in. So once we have that, we're going to simply do source slash env slash bin slash activate. There you go. Uh, make sure you have a space. It's source space env slash bin slash activate. And then you'll notice on the right hand side that my virtual environment is now active. So from there, we can actually install stuff locally and the dependencies will be scoped only to this project locally and not globally on your machine. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using the Stripe connector, but in case you were wondering, we can actually print a whole list of what connectors are available to Pi Airbyte. First thing we need to do is create our file. So I'm gonna say touch main.py, gonna open my code, uh, my, IDE here, let's open this up and make the text bigger so everyone can see. So obviously this is gonna be an empty file, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna import Airbyte as AB. So that's the obviously the biggest one that we're going to do here, the biggest import. And if we wanted to show all of the available connectors, all we have to do simply is do ab.get available, I can spell connectors run that function if we wanted to see it we can wrap that into a variable here so i'm going to say result equals ab dot get underscore available underscore connectors and then i'm going to print result and let me go ahead and python 3 main.py no module named airbyte you may need to install Airbyte into your virtual environment. That might be a good idea. I installed Airbyte globally onto my machine, but ensure that you have Airbyte installed in your virtual environment as well, and that error will go away. So if we run that again, you can see that I get no errors this time, and we're gonna let it run. It's actually just gonna pull all the available connectors and then show us that array once it's ready. So we're gonna give it a second, and as you can see, we have this full array of sources that we're able to pull from. And like I said, we're gonna use the Stripe one in this instance. So let me go ahead and show you how that's going to work. So let me go ahead and delete all this here. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to declare source here and we're gonna reach into AB, use the source object. And then within that, we have a methods available to us. So we're gonna say ab.get underscore source. And within this method, we're going to point to the connector that we want. And in this case, we're gonna say source hyphen stripe and that will allow us to pull the stripe connector only um, and gives us access to it so underneath that we have to set our configuration now if you're familiar with airbyte then you know that within each connector you need to set up the configuration to point to your specific instance so whether that be in the form of an api key client secrets the list goes on it, it's all dependent and uh, very individual to each connector in the case for stripe and if we were to do this right now let's just say we run this file right now python 3 domain of pi what it's going to do is it's actually going to install the source stripe connector as you can see on the left hand side and we can see that it's installed successfully and in our file browser right here you can see that we have the source stripe folder here but now what we can do is click this link that pops up in the terminal and we have our reference here for all of our config fields here you can see that two are required in the form of account id and secret key and then you have our property names that we're going to have to put into our pi airbyte demo here in order to actually successfully access the stripe instance so what i'm going to go ahead and do is we're we're gonna create our object now. So we're gonna say source dot set underscore config. Within that, we're gonna say config, and this is going to be an object. And within that object are going to be our config fields. So the first one that we have is account underscore ID. And here it accepts a string 
and I have my account ID for my Stripe account. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, paste that in here. Make sure to add the commas after. The second required field is going to be our client secret, but also keep in mind that secret key is the field name. The property name is going to be different and potentially maybe different for other fields. So please make sure that you're reading that properly in the documentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste client secret in there. That also accepts a string, which is going to be my client secret. Let me go ahead and grab this, paste that in here and word wrap it so that everyone can see. There we go. Let me go ahead and add my comma. And those are gonna be the only fields that I'm going to add for the sake of this demo. We can obviously add a replication start date or uh, you know loop back windows, but we don't need those right now. We're just gonna focus on what required fields we, we need. Now that we have our configuration set up, the way to check this and make sure that we're getting a 200 back when we make a call over to the Stripe API, it's fairly simple. We can actually go attack the source object here and say check. And what that'll simply do is check that this account ID and this client secret is indeed working. And what we can do is go back to our terminal here. We're gonna clear this, run the file one more time. It's already installed, so we don't need to install it again. And you can see that the terminal prints back that the check succeeded for our Stripe connector. Now that we can confirm that this connection is succeeded, we can actually get some results, read some streams and read the data. And the data is going to come in the form of what we're calling a cache. It's gonna be very different from what potentially what other Airbyte users are used to. But if this is new to you, we're gonna be reading data in the form of a cache. So now under here on line 14, I'm gonna say source.select all streams. And within that, we're gonna create that as a function or as the method, we're gonna do read underscore results. And that will be a byproduct of the AB object in that we have our read results and we can say source dot read as uh, and using that method to read all the available streams from the source. And if we do that here and we run this, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but we're going to connect to our Stripe instance here and literally read all of the records and all of the available streams and print them all in this result table that will pop up in this terminal that we have here, which is a very intuitive way of reading things and nice that it's all done for us. So we're gonna go ahead and let that run and we'll be back when it's finished. Cool, so it took a little bit of time, but you can see that we have uh, you know, the schema for all of these streams now. And we have a list of all 46 streams that are available to us. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that there are records in all of these streams, but you can see that we've successfully reached into Stripe. We've read all of the streams available to us. You know, we can reach into the coupon stream, the usage records, transfers, events, whatever you need. And it even tells us the time elapsed, which was 45 seconds. So now that we have all of our available streams that we can attack, now we can reach into them and actually read the results. Now I mentioned that all of these are stored in a cache. So you can see that this cache folder is now created and we can go into the nitty gritty into a later video of how that works with DuckDB. But let's go ahead and read some results here that we have. We can actually read these results in the form of data frames because we are using all of this in Python. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna create a value called customers underscore DF for data frames. And that is going to be read result because remember all of our records and pretty much everything is going to be in this read result variable. So we're gonna dig into that and we're gonna say in the customers stream, which is going to be available to us somewhere here, right here, it was printed from the list. We can say dot two underscore pandas and create that method. And now we can print the customers DF variable to our terminal. Now this will have to run the read one more time, but let's go ahead and run this, let it go. And then we'll see that it spits out a table in a data frame with all of the information that we need from the customer stream. All right, so now you can see that the table is now printed in our terminal here. We still have to run through all the streams here. But if you look down here in this table, we have we have seven, seven users with the name. You have your phone number. There should be email here, but it's a little cut off. But you can see that this is how easy it is to get up and running with PyAirbyte reading data from 
a source connector that we have. And then now this opens up the possibility of creating data frames from within Python using this data in the caches or even running SQL on top of it. So the opportunities are endless here and we're gonna show you more later down the line in more videos on how you can use PyAirbyte. But hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, let us know down in the comments section below. There will also be links to the GitHub repo as well as the what's coming soon roadmap for PyAirbyte so you can see what features are being built there. If you have any issues, also list them down on the GitHub repo as well. But if this was helpful, let us know. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.